What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Today, we're going to be going to 2 Kings chapter 18. Hallelujah. And before we get started, let me preach the gospel. And actually, before I even do that, God is leading me to say a couple things. I'm still blocked from sharing on, or I'm still blocked from Facebook, period. Can't get on Facebook Messenger, uh, Facebook at all. The enemy is coming against me real hard right now. I have a lot going on. Uh, if you haven't seen my last couple studies, check them out. Uh, if you end up watching this on Facebook, check them out on uh, youtube.com slash C slash Larry Newport. Uh, talk about, uh, you know, what I have going on, trying to do a Christian rap show, trying to put out a new project, trying to finish these Bible studies, uh, on all the chapters of the Bible and the enemy is coming against me hard, but it's all good because God is going to deliver me. God is going to get, get me, uh, his, his will is going to be accomplished. His, uh, what he wants done is going to be accomplished. Hallelujah. And let me preach the gospel, and we'll get into Second Kings chapter eighteen or Second Chronicles chapter eighteen. Hallelujah! Uh, everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul, destroyed forever. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with Him in His kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect, didn't deserve any punishment, the death that he died was for us. The death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on a cross. So that through him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection and he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later, and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life, if you believe that, and you truly turn to him and ask him to forgive you, he will forgive you, he'll give you the Holy Spirit, and he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. And so, here in Second Chronicles chapter 18, we're going to continue on with Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. We see Jehoshaphat from chapter 17 up to chapter 21. Now Jehoshaphat had great riches and honor, and he allied himself by marriage with, with, uh, with Ahab. Ahab, the same one that was with Je Jezebel. So they were reigning at the same time. Some years later, he went down to visit Ahab at Samaria. And Ahab slaughtered many sheep and oxen for him. And the people who were with him. And induced him to go up against Ramoth, Gil uh, Ramoth Gilead. Ahab, king of Israel, said to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Will you go with me against Ram Ramoth Gilead? And he said to him, I am as you are, and my people is your people, and we will be with you in the battle. Moreover, Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, Please inquire first for the word of Yahuwah. Then the king of Israel assembled the prophets, 400 men. Ahab assembled the prophets, 400 men, and said to them, Shall we go up against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I refrain? And they said, Go up. For God will give it into the hand of the king. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not yet a prophet of Yahuwah here that we may inquire of him? Because the prophets that Ahab had, they weren't true prophets of God. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of, of Yahuwah, but I hate him. For he never prophesies good concerning me, but always evil. He is Micaiah, the son of Emeo. But Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Bring quickly Micaiah, Emiah's son. Now the king of Israel, Ahab, and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, were sitting each on his throne, arrayed in their robes. And they were sitting at the threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets were prophesying before them. Zedekiah, the son of Chaniah, made horns of iron for himself and said, Thus says Yahuwah, With these you shall gore the Arameans until they are consumed. All the prophets were prophes prophesying thus, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and succeed. 
or Yahuwah will give it into the hand of the king. Then the messenger who went to summon Micaiah spoke to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets are uniformly favorable to the king. So please let your word be like one of them and speak favorably. But Micaiah said, As Yahuwah lives, what my God says, that I will speak. And let me say this, because God just put this on my heart. Before I continue on with the chapter. <clears throat> there were 400 prophets of Ahab. But they weren't true prophets of God. He believed them to be prophets of God, I believe. And the people believed them to be prophets of God. But they weren't. That's why Jehoshaphat said, is it, they're not yet a prophet of Yahuwah, a prophet of God, uh, to inquire of? And there was one, Micaiah. And Micaiah is slept on in the scriptures. He, I mean, he's not one of the prophets that wrote one of the, that we see in the books of the prophets, but we see that there were many prophets other than those. And so, Although there were all these other prophets saying one thing, Micaiah was hearing from God. And he said, he was told, all these prophets are prophesying uniformly. They're, they're all, all in agreement that, they, that we should go up against them. But My, Micaiah said, I will say, I will prophesy what God tells me. So he didn't just agree. He didn't, didn't just go with the crowd and just agree with everybody else because everybody else was saying the same thing. He went on what God was telling him. He knew he heard from God and he went on what God was telling him rather than just going with the crowd. We got to walk a narrow path. The wide, wide road leads to destruction. And I'm sure Micaiah was pressured because he sees all these other people, all these other so-called prophets, prophesying one thing, saying, you should do this. He could have easily said, yeah, do that. But he said, no. I'm going to do what God tells me. We have to follow God no matter what. We have to hear his voice. And even if, even if so many other people, when we see this online, we see this on Facebook. I see this on Facebook. With certain things. And one thing I will bring up. Thinking about it now. Kanye West. So when he first came out as a Christian, you know, I was, I was praying about it, and I was wondering, I mean, because I, I know so much about how it works within the music industry and the Illuminati and everything, and how you have to sell your soul, and and how this music this material, this, this stuff isn't going to come out. At least from what I thought, you know, isn't going to come out unless, you know, Satan allows it. Because Satan is in control of Hollywood. He's in, in control of entertainment and stuff. And I didn't, never expected God to lead me to speak on this tonight. But... So knowing that, you know, there's so many people coming out saying, and even today, so many people coming out saying, pointing out different things. How, oh, he, he's a false convert, he's deceiving people, this and that. So in the beginning, 
you know, I was I was just looking into it. I listened to the music. Kanye came came out with an album called Jesus is King. I listened to the music. And and was watching the interviews, watching different stuff, and and people were putting out videos on it and stuff. And so in the beginning, you know, I prayed about it. And when I asked God something, 99.9% .9 of the chance, time, he gives me an answer. And God told me that he's legit, that he truly did turn. And then, you know, I, I was watching some videos and, and there was one thing that, you know, pe people were putting out videos talking about how, oh, this is still Masonic. Oh, uh, he still put, uh, there's still the symbolism in his stuff. There's still uh, different stuff. And, and what got me was when I saw that the al album was put out, that Jesus is King, his first, uh, his album was put out by Def Jam. And I was like, well, well, Def Jam isn't going to put out a Christian album. Def Jam isn't going to promote this if he if he truly turned to God. And so I kind of left it at that. And, uh, you know, I, I believe for a little bit, you know, that he, uh, you know, I, I kind of forgot about him. And and I was thinking, oh, well, you know, he, he's just probably out to deceive people, you know, he's a false convert, you know. And... But God told me at first that he was real, that he really tr truly turned. He really became a Christian. And just recently, in the last couple weeks, I don't remember what began it, where, where, I, uh, where it came from, but it's all leading up to this point in this video that I'm recording right now, where I came across his music again. Uh, I think it was his new album. And, you know, I, I listened to it and I, I started looking back into it. I listened to Jesus is King again. And, you know, I was really praying about it. And God told me again that he truly did turn. And I believe this. I know what God is telling me. And just because, and the reason for me bringing this up is because, you know, there's a lot of people out here. I'll say a lot of individuals because a lot of people a lot of individuals aren't people. There's a lot of demons out here. But, you know, a lot of Christian channels and a lot of, a lot of YouTube channels and a lot of people, you know, pointing out different stuff. And then, and then I, I went into a comment section the other day on a YouTube channel, a YouTube, YouTube video. I didn't even watch the video. I just started reading through the comments. And everyone was like, like, yeah, great video. Uh, uh, you're right. He, he is false like and people are being deceived and so there's so many people saying that Kanye is a false convert that he's you know deceiving people that this and that but I know what God told me I know what he told me at first and then once I came then I to be honest I you know once I learned about the Def Jam thing this being put out by a major label that doesn't promote any type of Christian music. You know, I, I, I just kind of, I thought, well, so I, I'll, I'll say, I guess at first, I forgot what God had told me and didn't believe, uh, you know, believe that he was false or whatever. But then once, I started looking back into him again, listening to the music and everything. And I was really praying on it. And God told me that he is real. Kanye West is a Christian. And so, just like Micaiah had all these people saying one thing. He was like, I, I'm going to tell what God tells me. See, so it, in, in this instance, 
in this situation, I could just be like, well, uh, all, all these all these other people were saying, well, he's he's false that he uh, he's, he's not a not a real Christian, this and that. I could just go along with the crowd. But I'm telling you right now what God has told me, what God has showed me, that he is real. That he truly gave his life to God. He's serving God. And I got to go on what God is telling me. I have to go on what God is telling me. And also I'll say Marilyn Manson. So Kanye does these uh, these Sunday services, these church services out, outdoors and stuff. And at one recently, it was him, Justin Bieber was there, and Marilyn Manson showed up. And there's rumors that Marilyn Manson became a Christian as well. And so everybody's also out here saying... Everybody is out here also saying, you know, Marilyn Manson, he, he, he's the one that said he was gonna, wanted to de destroy Christianity. Can God not save anybody? God can save anybody. God can call anybody. Marilyn Manson actually grew up in the church. He went to a Christian school, I believe. And based on what I believe God has told me, I believe he turned as well. And right after he did, all these allegations start coming out against him about abusing women and stuff. Right after that, right after he, he turned. I believe Mar Marilyn Manson is saved as well. Marilyn Manson, ain't, Marilyn Manson and Kanye West. Probably Justin Bieber too. I didn't ask God about him. And so I was not expecting... To speak about this in this video at all. It wasn't on my mind at all. God put it on my heart. But I do believe. That Kanye West. Is a true believer. If you haven't heard the album. Jesus is King. Go listen to it. Kanye West. Jesus is King. And also the. You know. The recent one he put out. Uh, called Donda. Uh, put, I believe it was put out last year. Donda was his mother's name. And it's a long album. And he does have a lot of Jay-Z's on the second song. I don't believe Jay-Z has turned. He has in, uh, in industry people on it. He's still Kanye West. Even though he turned, he's still Kanye West. He still knows all these people. He's still in the industry, kind of. Basically. But he did. Uh, there uh, any 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 bad words or anything that anybody else said on his album, the guest appearances, they're muted. And apparently, from what I heard, uh, at at the sessions for that for that uh, album, the recording sessions for that album, he had he had Bible studies with the people. And uh, I don't I don't care what anybody else says, what anybody else thinks. I'm gonna go on what God tells me, what God shows me, and I do believe Kanye West truly gave his life to Jesus. I believe DMX did as well. I believe Marilyn Manson did. So as, I don't I don't care how many people out here saying contrary showing different stuff and although there is still symbolism I haven't seen Kanye do any symbolism but in the production and stuff uh, like shows and stuff that was pointed out like when when this first came up that uh, there's still like Masonic symbolism in there I believe God is allowing that But he's allowing Kanye to, you know, keep doing what he's doing. He's allowing him to be in the industry. And still be at his position that he was at.
I don't know if that was caught on the video. They got a fog light out, the one eye, one eye thing. So even though it's still, there's still, still maybe stuff here and there, even though, you know, I don't know. I just know what God is telling me. And, and if you truly listen through Donda as well, you know, it's, a, it's amazing music. And Kanye is not perfect, but he isn't making godly music. At least for the most part. Coming from where he came from, it's, uh, it's good stuff. Holly suggested. And uh, let's go ahead and get back to the study. <laughs> Definitely didn't expect to speak about that. And I actually, I was thinking about it the other day. I was thinking about making a video on this, on this topic. Um, on Kanye and, you know, Marilyn Manson and stuff. But, you know, I guess this, this was it. But let's get back to the study. See where we're at. Verse 12, chapter 18 of 2 Chronicles. Then the messenger who went to summon Micaiah spoke to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets are uniformly favorable to the king. So please let your word be like one of them and speak favorably. But Micaiah said, As Yahuwah lives, what my God says, that I will speak. When he came to the king, the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go, to, go up to Ramoth Gilead to battle? Or shall I refrain? He said, Go up and succeed, for they will be given into your hand. Then the king said to him, How many times must, must I adjure you to speak to me nothing but the truth in the name of Yahuwah? See, he just said that. At first, he just went along with the, the prophets. Just like, wow, I didn't even think about that. Just like I kind of did at first. Went, went along with what everybody else was saying. Then the king said to him, How many times must I adjure you to speak to me nothing but the truth in the name of Yahuwah? So he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains like sheep which have no shepherd. And Yahuwah said to me, they, These have no, pastor, have no master. Let each of them return to his house in peace. Then the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that he would not prophesy good concerning me, but evil? Micaiah said, Therefore hear the word of Yahuwah. I saw Yahuwah sitting on, on his throne. So Ma Micaiah, let me read this again. Micaiah said, Therefore hear the word of Yahuwah. I saw Yahuwah sitting on his throne, and all the hosts of heaven standing on his right and on his left. Yahuwah said, Who will entice Ahab, king of Israel, to go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said this, while another said that. Then a spirit came forward and stood before Yahuwah and said, I will entice him. And Yahuwah said to him, How? He said, I will go and be a deceiving spirit in the mouth, mouth of all his prophets. Then he said, You were to entice him and prevail also. Go and do all, go and do so. Now therefore Yahuwah has put a deceiving spirit in the mouth of these your prophets. For Yahuwah has proclaimed disaster against you. God let God put a deceiving spirit. A spirit I, I don't know if this was a Says a spirit. So I don't know if this is a an, a an angel of God or maybe a fallen angel came before God and said that. I lean to an angel, angel of God. To deceive his prophets, to deceive Ahab so he would fall. 
Then Zedekiah, the son of Chaniah, came near and struck Micaiah on the cheek and said, How did the spirit of Yahuwah pass from me to speak to you? To speak to you? Micaiah said, Behold, you will see on that day when you enter into an inner room to hide yourself. Don't let these cops mess with me now. Then Zedekiah, the son of Chanana. Hold on. Let me read this again from verse 23. Yeah, it's a cop sitting there right behind the tree. Then Zedekiah, the son of Chanana, came near and struck Micaiah on the cheek and said, How did the spirit of Yahuwah pass from me to speak to you? Micaiah said, Behold, you will see on that day when you enter an inner room to hide yourself. Then the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and return him, return him to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus says the king, Put this man in prison and feed him sparingly with bread and water until I return safely. Yahuwah has not spoken by me. One more time from verse 25, actually. Then the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and return him to Ammon the governor of the city and to Joash the king's son and say, Thus says the king, Put this man in prison and feed him sparingly with bread and water until I return safely. Micaiah said, If you indeed return safely, Yahuwah is not spoken by me. And he said, Listen, all you people. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah went up against Ramoth Gilead. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and go into battle. Ahab said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and go into battle. And so we, we're going to see the fall of Ahab here. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, went up against Ramoth Gilead. And I'm just reading through this again. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Ahab said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and go into battle, but, but you put on your robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went into battle. Now the king of Aram had commanded the ca captains of his chariots, saying, Do not fight with small or great, but with the king of Israel alone, with Ahab alone. But Ahab, Ahab disguised himself as a, you know, a regular soldier or something, and Jehoshaphat was wearing the robes. He was, he was the one looking like a king. It was like Ahab knew that they were just gunning for him. And he let Jehoshaphat go in there looking like the king. Now the king of Aram had commanded the captains of his chariot, saying, Do not fight with small or great, but with the king of Israel alone. So when the captains of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat, they said, It is the king of Israel. And they turned aside to fight against him. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and Yahuwah helped him. And God diverted them from him. When the captains of the chariot saw that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back from pursuing him. A certain man drew his bow at random and struck the king of Israel in a joint of the armor. So he said to the driver, driver of the chariot, Turn around and take me out of the fight, for I'm, I am severely wounded. The battle raged that day, and the king of Israel propped himself up in the chariot in front of the Arameans until evening. And at sunset he died. And so that, that's the death of Ahab, wife, uh, husband of Jezebel. He wasn't supposed to go. Well, Micaiah told him the truth. 
it was God's plan for him to fall. And God's plan prevailed because Ahab had done a lot of wickedness. God had deceived his prophets. But Jehoshaphat said, no, well, is there actually a prophet of God? And he at first lied. And then he told him the truth when he asked him. But they went up anyway. He didn't listen to him. He didn't listen to Micaiah, the true prophet of God. He disobeyed. They went into war. He tried to disguise himself. They went after Jehoshaphat first because they thought that was Ahab. And it said he got struck by an arrow in the joint of the armor. It went through his armor. It was God's plan for Ahab to fall that day, and he did. And that's the end of chapter 18. And, uh, again, you know, check that music out. Uh, Jesus is King and Donda, Kanye's music. Hallelujah. And there's something I got to pray about concerning that. And I, I'll do it on the video. Because I know, I'll say this. With the music in the music industry, not necessarily in this case, because Kanye is a producer and he produces his, his own stuff. But, um, so I don't, I don't think this would be the case for that. But they, a lot of industry music, they actually, you know, summon demons into into the records so whoever listens to the music will be affected by these demons uh there's i would highly suggest research and look up on youtube john todd um try finding videos on john todd and uh he talks about it he used to be a major industry executive and he talks he used to talk about how they uh he became a Christian, and he and then he exposed the, the Illuminati, and he uh, talked about how they would take the master record up to this temple room and summon demons up up into the up into the record and say, uh, tell them to to follow every song on this record, and other you know in order that whoever listens to it will be affected by it, affected by the demons, or Potentially possessed by the demons. Uh, and so, Lord, I pray that if any of that was done in any way with Kanye's music, Jesus is King or Donda or anything he's working on now, I pray that it would be canceled. All demonic assignments canceled. In the name of Yeshua. Praise God. But hallelujah. Let's be right with God. Let's be ready. Let's serve him with all our heart, all our soul, and all our strength. Let's be ready for the return of the Lord. And let's help others be ready for the return of the Lord. Let's preach the gospel. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to him. Jesus loves you. He wants to give you eternal life. And if you believe that he died for you on the cross in order to offer you eternal life, and you truly turn to him and ask him to forgive you, he'll forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit. And he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. We'll give you life to Jesus today. That's the end of Second Chronicles 19, uh, 18. Thank y'all for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.